I want to talk about Zack Snyder being obsessed with Batman's sex life. Oh, yeah. my. Uh, <laughs> I about this morning. Uh, so what's going on? Zack Snyder put out a tweet that said, does Batman have sex? My version of Batman definitely did, but that isn't always the case. Learn all about Batman's sex life in this article from inverse.com superhero issue guest edited by me. And of course, I just want to point out Jeremy's response. Geeks and Gamers is not a film. <laughs> uh, 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 I, don't know if I you would guys be either. Have you heard him talk wow. about uh, wow. little boys in Roman times? Yeah. I don't know if you guys had a, had a chance to read through this inverse article, but it's basically about Some of it. uh, Batman's gay, and they're unapologetic about that. And also Batman fucks. Oh, my God. And, uh, cool. and it's cool that he has nipples on his costume and uh is that robin in bed with him what the f yes yes that is robin yeah it's this, from this one, of, one the of the examples <sighs> yeah this is one of the examples of batman being gay um but one of the interesting things about this is is this article kind of talks about how uh batgirl um and batman like you know there, there's like this whole shipping thing and in the killing joke animated version Batman and Batgirl actually hook up and that caused this huge outcry amongst uh, Batman fans because they're like, she's 16 and, and his apprentice and he's banging her. Mm. And, and so like the, this article was just like one interview after another of people who want to pervert Batman huh. into uh, like weird sexual stuff. And obviously, you know, Batman has sex, you know, like Damian Wayne is, is his son, sure. you know, Talia Al Ghul, you know, he hooked mm. up with her, uh, Vicky Vale, like all this stuff. So like no one's, no one's disputing the fact that Batman has sex, but uh, Zack Snyder seems particularly obsessed with it because he actually had actual comic book accurate artwork commissioned of Batman eating out cat. Oh God. That's crazy. <laughs> Do you not remember that? It was all over Twitter. I don't remember that. Yeah. Maybe I so so Zack Snyder I remember it. And Zack Snyder famously talked about how he wanted to do a scene where Batman was raped in prison. Which he what? which oddly enough Joker two kind of did <laughs> on his behalf. Good Lord. So uh so there, there's some weird crossover there. But yeah like like Zack Snyder has like some weird fetish stuff going on with the Cape Crusader, and uh, so did Joel Schumacher and all this other stuff. So I, I want to throw this uh, to the panel, but we're st we'll start with you, Polly. Why? Uh, does, <laughs> does, does, does sex no. have anything, uh, any place in comic books? In comic books or the movies? Both. Oh, is <laughs> sex or like... Particularly Batman stuff. Yeah, but like sex or like relationships? No, sex. Oh God! The act of penis inserting. Well, vagina. Stop it! Stop wow! It, stop it, stop it. Yes. <laughs> sex belong. You can have sex in, in media. Uh, sure. I, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. Uh, PG. Sure. Like it's nothing that we see. It's like as far as like comic books, and comic book movies, because these are for kids as well, man. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like if you're gonna have relationships, uh, do not make it R make it pg and like you know oh i love you i love you all right let's go to the bedroom and cut N nothing else and then if you get all dark and weirdo like uh joker did oh and that sex scene then you know you're gonna lose a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> you lost a lot of money I, I i don't need this stuff in my comic books no and, and if, and if I mean, that's, the, that's the easy answer and if no. there's something i want to see in, in this kind of a comic book, I'll go buy a heavy metal magazine or, or something like that. It, it is a weird question. Why did you ask me that question? Because that's my job. Uh, yeah, oh, he always likes right. he likes to inflict he does that shit. weird yeah. questions on you. Yeah, which brings me to yeah. Odin. Uh, Odin. Odin's weird. I wanted to I wanted to ask you. So, so like one of the weird things about this article to me is that it really was, and, and Polly kind of touched on this. It really was about targeting children. It was about using. Batman, who's a very popular character amongst kids and, and teens and comic book collectors and stuff like that. It was about using him as a vehicle to introduce like homosexuality and uh, fetishism and stuff like that to kids in particular. And, you know, we, we've seen this kind of like quest or crusade for activists out there where, where it's, it's like, you know, sexualizing books in children's libraries and, you know, like all this other stuff. And it really does seem to be 
propaganda stuff targeted towards kids. And that's all this article was. And the fact that Zack Snyder was the editor of this article and he was the one kind of pushing forward this message, I find a little bit disturbing. But since you are the steward of America's youth, you know, you are, you are a teacher, I want to get your take Ooh. on this. What's your take on sexuality in Batman and Batman comics? Uh, it's grooming, plain and simple. I mean, mm. you, you kind of laid it on, laid it all out there. When you have a content that is strictly being directed towards kids and you are therefore adding in sexual content into that content and then having it be a point that you want this to be in that new content, you are basically saying, okay, so you want to expose kids younger and younger to this stuff so that they become desensitized to it, which means you are ergo what? grooming them so that's all that really it ends up being in my opinion and this just the fact that Zack Snyder is involved just brings me back to the thing I've been saying for a long time screw Zack Snyder uh we should really honestly just stop supporting him I would not be sad whatsoever if he's just stopped making movies uh or at least stop making them publicly if he just wants to go off in a little corner and make his little uh rebel moons all he wants that's fine just don't release it companies don't buy his crap anymore his his content is worthless and I'm, I'm sorry like that that dude has been even the good things he has done i think were overrated and i think he's done so much more worse yeah. garbage tier on the surface garbage tier stuff that at this point it's like go away seriously yeah uh so tom you linked us this article where it talks about how studio executives basically said that uh heroes don't go down on women uh, I just wanted to correct like it as much as I hate Zach and as depraved as he is. Cause Oh, plus trust me, go listen to his Joe Rogan uh, mm. interview from about seven months ago. He, he goes on this mm. tangent about how Romans fuck each other. And that's why they defend their brothers. Weird. And he's talking about how, you know, they're young apprentices and he's just getting all giddy about it and shit. And it's like, you're late in homosexuality and probable diddling problems are really starting to surface here, dude. And then this is the same interview where we get the whole thing where he's like, well, my Batman has sex, right? And, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, dude, we get it. You want to make everybody gay because you're a latent homosexual. Get off it. And this is not always about sex. Yes, you can have sex in comic books. Yes, there are plenty of comic books that have sex in it. But I agree in the, in the mainstream Batman comic, DC said no to this for the very fact that it is technically something that they consider family entertainment to where it has to be okay for kids. Now, if you're doing a killing joke, graphic novel or dark Knight returns, something like that, totally different scenario, totally different conversation. But at the same time, it's like, why are we obsessed with this shit? Or why is he obsessed with this shit? We talked about it the other day, how it was a joke in mall rats. Well, the reason it's a joke in mall rats is because nobody is obsessed with it other than Jason Lee's character. That's the whole joke. Mm -hmm. Nobody else gives a crap. Right, that's right? a joke. Because all we want to see about comic book superheroes do is be superheroes. But so to answer Matt's question, with Catwoman, that's about it. Yeah. So you guys still man to answer Matt's question. Do heroes go down? Well, absolutely, <laughs> they do. Of course, they unsung do. heroes. Yes, indeed. yes. In the privacy Hero of their heroes, own bedroom, where the artist is not drawing them. Yes. Sure, that's completely <laughs> fine. But nothing wrong <laughs> but, with, but uh, weird, with, <clears throat> with going down on a woman. The weird part about the the thing that Zack Snyder got commissioned is like they're having sex in their superhero outfit mm -hmm. right it's, it's not mm -hmm. like they're like in a hotel room with like clothes off and stuff like that they're on a dirty rooftop kinky yeah they're, yeah they're they're on a dirty rooftop in full like you know batman and catwoman yeah. gear so that's like a okay. that's like zach's fantasy then right Maybe they're like a they have a latex fantasy or something or it's like you well, know like it's a okay you know, i'm not gonna well even like back in the day like <laughs> yes they would flirt in like batman the tv show and certain things like that but that's about as far as it would go right so like that's it but even adam west said that costume got him laid more times than ever right sure. so let's that's what i was yeah that's what i was referring to is that people in general are you know have their their, their yeah, kinks, yeah but, their but kinks. here's the thing it got him laid outside of exactly role of Batman. dude i'm just saying right and so he's carrying this too far do we do we have the same conversation with about uh superman and lois lane or peter parker and mary jane watson all this kind of stuff i mean yeah, I mean, I you gotta, you gotta, everything's so perverted now yeah. already, right? Like that's I, not, that's not. Well, 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 you know, no one's more perverted on this panel than Brian from the Popcast. I want to throw this, this question to him because he's also our DC expert, 
right? Uh, the DC Comics. How am I the most perverted one to hear that? I don't get Brian, that. Brian, you you probably oh, dream please. about Smurfette and Smurf Village doing all a bunch of weird Smurf Smurfette's stuff. hot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? She's hot. Dirty little slut. I mean, it's <laughs> weird that she likes you chooses to spend all of her time with nothing but dudes. La, 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 la. Oh, boy. Doing the Lord's work over there. What would they do without her? Is it is it Smurfette trans though? Isn't that God? I hope not. That no, would I just, hope not. That just makes it worse. Kind of technically, yes. God, technically bless everyone is. Matt. But Odin, I'm out of here. Anyways, Matt, what's your question? <laughs> well, I, I was just gonna say, like, oh, we uh, know his questions. Like in this article, they kind of point out that um, Tim Burton leaned heavy into like the fetish stuff with Batman and Catwoman and the rubber suits and stuff like that. And it seemed like Joel Schumacher took that up a notch where he, you know, put uh, anatomically correct aspects to like the bat suits right, and, nipples. and things of that nature. <laughs> um, but to, to me, like, I, I feel like this idea that comics need to be fetishized or, you, you know, um, kind of like, you know, sexualized, over sexualized, especially in terms of like how Zack Snyder presented the, the DC universe and stuff like that. Do you think that going forward, we're going to see um, more of this or less of it? Um, I think we're going to see more of it in like this, like the quote unquote progressive state. Like we're going to see more and more characters that just happen to be gay or trans or, you know, mm -hmm. deal with these like social issues that our society has deemed the most important thing in the world is what your identity is. So you need to apply your identity uh, to these characters that have been around for a hundred years. Mm. Um, we're going to see that. So like the sexual preferences are going to continually make their way into comic books and comic book movies and TV shows because that's all this. It's weird. It's this, this new generation is very odd. Like they don't want to see sex in movies, but they also want to ship everything. So they want to see right. their very specific, very weird, strange. furry, trans, Whatever you might they want to see, mixing their two groups to, together there accidentally, Brian. Though that, that's just my opinion, but because I, 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 what do you mean? I think there's a slightly older group that is this perverted, they're the ones that are making all this crap, right? But sure, what that has done is inadvertently made a, a generation come up underneath it now, which is like a part where my kids yeah. are part of that generation because we never got to it yet, but we had been doing this study for or looking into the study that was done about this whole thing that you're talking about where they said kids are tired of all this sex and everything. And it's kind of you're right. The There's two separate groups is, there, but but yeah, because the, the group one group is saying that now they don't know how to actually have friendships because everything is about sex. So they all they know now is like these mm -hmm. basically friends with benefits and stuff right. like that. They don't know even real. Well, I mean that that, that, that first anyway, group you mentioned, a, yeah, that first yeah. group you mentioned, groomed the, the the second group you mentioned. That's yeah. the problem. They groomed it with with media and and with weird progressive ide ideology. This is where we're at. And I don't know, you know, I think age and maturity will probably fix a lot of people uh, if they don't go so far gone that they can't even, like, interact with folks anymore. But as mm. far as comic books and movies and that kind of stuff, that's it's going to continue to be a problem until Suits, and unfortunately, like, Suits and Studios, who don't want to lose money, they're going to be like, you know what, no, I'm sorry, we cannot make, like, Batwoman, Batman was not a woman at some point, we can't do that, like... They're going to push back because a large portion of fans, a larger, the majority are still like, hey, stop with this weird ideology. Stop messing up our characters and stop change, uh, stop gender bending them and adding their sexual preferences to everything we do. And just, just tell good stories and shut up. Agreed. Well, what do you guys think is Zack Snyder's role in all this? Because he seems to be out there very much advocating for an overly sexualized form of Batman, especially in the movies. And, uh, I need to get laid watch, or something, man. Something's wrong with him. And if you watch that uh. Uh, that Joe Rogan interview, that's also the interview where he did that dubious math about uh, Rebel Moon. Oh yeah, and how it yeah. made more money yeah. than like any movie in the history <laughs> right. of movies. I uh, it, 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 if it had sold tickets, instead of well, being, there you go. Well, I already told you he's yeah. a delusional, latent homosexual, right? Like that, probably even worse than that. To be honest with you, it's more like the, well. the kind that likes younger folks. I'm not going to say the words like out loud. I'm not going to go directly to that point, but. It sucks. I feel like fuck. he's the kind who might be on a certain list. Exactly. Starts exactly. With, starts with an E. An yeah. E let, let's not even get too deep into it. But no, no. At the end of the day, <laughs> he's obsessed with it for some fucking reason. He's, the he's a big files. proponent of it. And a lot of the people behind the scenes are too. So that's where this shit's coming from. 
And yeah, was it a little titillating to see Catwoman and doing all? Yeah, absolutely. It woke my 12 year old self up. But you know what? At that time, I didn't get the connection. Now, as an adult, I can watch it and go, oh, clearly I see what Tim Burton's do doing here. He's saying, oh, she's taking control of her life. So that, you know, combine that with the BDSM thing. Yeah, it makes sense. But at the time, as kids, we didn't see that. We didn't understand all that stuff. Yeah, we did. That's the thing is you can do two levels to this stuff and it still work for both adults and kids. But they're trying to actually make it perverted, right? Like, that's the problem, is they're, they're going out of their way to actually make the thing so in your face. And it is and, almost like a grooming of sorts. And, and the weird part about this article was they, they specifically called out Bruce Tim, who was the, the guy behind, like, Batman, the animated series and stuff like that. And how Bruce mm -hmm. Tim, for the longest time, wanted to have this relationship between Batgirl and Batman. And they finally got the chance to do it in their Killing Joke adaptation. And the backlash from fans kind of woke them up to the fact like, oh, this is not something that we should be, you know, further exploring. Right. In fact, uh, in the article, they mentioned how a studio executive actually floated this idea to them. They're like, we already tried that. They we're going nowhere near that ever again <laughs> mm -hmm. because the fan backlash was, was so like powerful because not only did it piss off like the regular fans who were like, dude, she's an underage girl and she's his apprentice and mm -hmm. like also the daughter of his best friend, you know, um, also, like the the women that they were trying to appeal to, who are like the feminists, who are like, oh, you're so you're saying that she needs a man in order to feel empowered, <laughs> you know? So like they just pissed off both sides, and uh, so like the fact that Bruce Tim was also kind of going down this route, but he he was smart enough to see how the fans reacted and backtracked from it, I I think is very telling, and it, it's one of those things, guys, where, and I'd like to hear your your thoughts on this real quick before we we move on, like Bruce Tim seems to be one of the few people in Hollywood who actually like pays attention to the fans. Whereas Zack Snyder doesn't give a crap. Uh, Todd Phillips doesn't give a crap. They, they make stuff for themselves mm. and they're very selfish in that regard. And they just continue to piss off the fans. <laughs> you know what I mean? Agreed. Yeah. Good job, Matt. Yes. Thank you. We all agree with you. you. We well, didn't throw it to anybody. I'm used to that. So I wasn't sure if we should just start talking. It was an, it was an open panel. Yes. It was an yeah, open I, panel question. It was, that was well, a weird no, thing. Like Bruce Tim is an old school guy. He comes from, mm -hmm. you know, the Batman animated series and a bunch of other stuff that he's worked on in the past. And he understands that it's more about the audience and not himself. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and Zach is all about himself at the end of the day. Let's be real. If, if you can, if you can sit there and watch the justice league, Snyder cut and not see it for what it is. Even if you like it, that's fine. But it is just basically him, you know, ejaculating all over himself for four and a half fucking hours. Yeah. I liked <laughs> yeah. it though. You can like it all you want. That's fine. But it, it, at the end of the day, it's not a movie that needs to be four and a half fucking hours. Yeah. You're just overindulgent. And that's what Zack Snyder is a very overindulgent individual who has basically been sidelined by Hollywood. That's why. Netflix is the only buddy who only people who will work with him. And even they're getting to the point where they're just kind of like, yeah, we're not seeing any returns on a lot of this stuff. And people aren't watching it as much as you claim, because as Warner brothers learned and others learn, this guy is a shyster of some sort. Like there's something about him that, you know, I've heard enough stuff to, to where I'm not even talking about the sexual side of it. Now I'm just talking about the way he does business. It's kind of a right? used like, car salesman, right? It, it is. Cause he lied about, he, he basically hired these PR firms to help push for his, uh, Snyder cut and Warner brothers found out mm. and that's, and they thought it was, he made it believe, made him believe it was all fans and stuff. And yeah, he had Snyder wow. campaigns, but if you go look into it, most of the money comes from like three or four big fish, mm -hmm. right? Like it's, it's not like it's a ton, a ton of people. And then at the end of the day, yeah, he's got his nice little fan base, but it ain't worth spending three, $400 million on a movie for right. There's ain't that many people going to come see it. Because people already know he, he's he's quickly becoming the next Michael Bay in that respect because people already know what to expect out of him. He's a meme. I mean, he literally oh. had he was he, he had well, Michael Bay slow had motion hit. farming. Yeah, but he had slow motion farming mm. in Rebel Moon for Pete's sake. <laughs> yeah. Michael Bay's successful. True. Michael Bay knows how to make a Michael Bay movie. I mean, he's made you a know, lot. Of, I mean, yeah. And he still, so, he still makes. Michael Bay we, isn't as that's pretentious. That's the. I difference. like Michael Bay movies. Yeah. Michael Bay at I least is aware yeah. that the audience has to like what you're, he's making too. That's the. And big you difference. have romance in there, but it's not. You know, it's you know, Michael Bay knows his movies. Like and there's lots of explosions. 
explosion, yeah, slow, slow motion, and did he you know, do Bad Boys too? Yeah, probably, probably got Ryan one, Reynolds in it. He's Bad Boys behind too, Bad Boys. That's what I'm saying. Is like you know, and then you got the well, I'm not got dissing on him. I he said he. Come out. No, but He's you're well aware that there's an audience. I don't, think there's, I don't no, think there's a comparison. But the difference is Zach is making shit for himself. Michael Bay is making stuff for his audience. But I'm just, I was comparing him in a sense that Not they become time. a meme, right? Like people know the meme with Michael Bay. It's kind of the same thing with Zach, only he's worse. Yeah. Ambulance yeah, was think, garbage. I'm sorry. I, I, he made I that in 2022. Fam- I think famously. People yeah, liked it. I like, I like the ambulance. <laughs> people liked it. Of course it. you did. I, I, think I did. I thought it was good. The, the whole. Um, release the Snyder. I like how uh, Odin is above above a movie about an ambulance. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, he, he's not wrong, though. That movie was. It's Odin. Um, ah. but, but no, it's movie, not. No. So I, I like I, the actress I, in it, too. Whatever her name is. I, I, I think it's very, I think it's Gonzalez. very telling here that basically right. Zack Snyder is famous for that release the Snyder Cut campaign where it was entirely astroturfed. Uh, Tom mentioned yeah. this, like he hired numerous PR firms that use bot armies on social that media. That I didn't know to basically create this this idea that there was a demand for his version of the Justice League. And he was able to basically fool Warner Brothers to into releasing his cut and even giving him money to like finish it. And then once all that was done, it came out that, you know, there were shenanigans, that this was entirely astroturf. Yeah, there was like a small portion of people who were like, yeah, release the Snyder Cut. But for the most part, uh, all the Snyder bros, all the most toxic people out there yeah. that would attack you for for daring to criticize Zack Snyder. They were all bots from PR firms that worked for Zack Snyder. Yeah, they've yep. been quiet lately. Yeah. Well, yep. once once Elon yeah. purged all the bots, right? Gone. It's, it's yeah, like he lost the, his the, army. And yeah, Zack don't have the money anymore either. That's the other thing too. Yeah. Yep. I know I know guys that st- that go to his Zack events. Well, he's well, he has his a, a fan base. I'm not yeah, saying he his, doesn't. He's got his yeah. cult fan fan base. You know. I mean, it's I can't just not as big as he tries I to present. Just like it. everything he's ever made, I like a lot of his stuff. I like but, some of his but, stuff. But you know, he's he's a little weird.